Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome to this How to Draw Claude video where I will be walking you through some of the steps that I use whenever I'm making a scientific illustration. Now, scientific illustrations are one of my favorite topics because they help combine two of my favorite subjects, that is art and biology. And up on the screen right now uh, are some of the scientific illustrations that scientists from around the world and at other museums make in order to uh, continue with their work. Now, these scientific illustrations are really important to scientists because it helps them make key observations out in the field of the animals that they are looking at. And when they're done making these observations, they can bring back these illustrations to whatever lab or research facility they're working at and then translate those observations into whatever notes that they feel are important to them at that moment. So it's a really helpful side of the scientific uh, sphere that doesn't really get a lot of attention. So today I'll be showing you some of the tricks that I use in order to make these scientific observations. Now, right here, we have our white alligator Claude, who can be found at the California Academy of Sciences. And the next time you're at the California Academy of Science, take a look at Claude and grab one of our GSA notebooks to uh, try and sketch him. Uh, most of the time you'll be seeing him from this sort of top-down view. So we're going to try and draw him from a more bird's eye view uh, situation like you would when you are visiting the academy. So to start off, Let's make a few observations about Claude and about how we are going to draw him. So first off, one thing to note is the different shapes around Claude's body. So let's start with the head. So Claude, like other alligators, have this nice U-shaped snout, kind of curves like that. And so we're going to try and capture that in our drawing today. Now, Claude also has these defined sort of eyebrow bumps and ridges right above his eyes. And so we're going to try and draw that as well. And also these sort of nose ridge right here. Now, moving down the body, we're going to make note of how his arms and legs are kind of splayed to the side of his body. So we're going to try and capture that in our sketches as well. Mark down all four directions for these legs. And we are also going to take a look at how his scales are aligned along his body. You can see that they have these long sort of drawn out lines right there following his body horizontally and also vertically as well. So we're going to try to make sure that we define those as well, as well as the ones on the sides of his body here. All right, now I think that is pretty good for preliminary observations. So I think we can start on the sketch. Now I am going to make Claude a little bit more translucent so we can really focus in on the lines that we drew. All right, so let's start out with this U-shaped nose, this mouth right here. So we're going to start by drawing a nice simple U. There you go. Make sure it's nice and long right there. And then right above this U, we're going to draw in those eyebrow ridges that we talked about earlier. So one and two. And these can be nice sort of short curved lines right there and there. And then to define that sort of nose ridge, uh, we're going to add two more lines below these eyebrow ridges. So one <clears throat> and two. Perfect. Now, going back to the rest of Claude's head, you can see that his jaw muscles kind of jut out at this angle right here uh, and makes a sort of curved line as his head connects to his neck. So we're going to try to capture that as well. So <clears throat> let's make sure that we get these jaw muscles in a nice curved line. So I'm going to start here, curve, and then come back in. And on the other side as well, 
start back, curve out, and come back in. And it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't, doesn't need to be true to form like how you can see Claude right here. Uh, it just needs to make sure that you have all of these sort of observations that you've made about the animal you are drawing. And to help really bring those out, you can draw arrows to certain parts of the animal and write little notes. So we'll write you shaped mouth and then jaw muscles up here. Perfect. All right, continuing along the body of Claude, we're going to give him a pretty short neck because he doesn't really have that well-defined of a neck. So two small lines right here should be just fine. And we'll add the eyes later once we're done to kind of round it all off. So next up are the arms. Now, what I really like about Claude and other alligators in general is that these arms are relatively simple to draw. They don't really have a defined shoulder right here. So all we need to do to draw the arms are draw a couple of lines. So we're gonna draw two lines to start out. First one, we're gonna have it jut outside of its uh, Claude's body like we observed before. So we're going to have it come on like that. We'll draw one line here. And then to give Claude an elbow, we're going to draw a second line at a slightly different angle in this direction uh, that I'm showing you right now. So here's the second line. Perfect. All right. And to get the other side of the arm, we're going to do the same thing, draw two lines in the, about the same direction. One, two. And then finally, for the fingers, we're going to make sure that we get about five fingers. So we'll draw five small triangles at the end of this arm. So one, two, three, four, and five. And I feel it helps if I count out the number of lines uh, I'm drawing out loud to help me focus on uh, the animal as well. All right, we're gonna do the same for the other side. So one line here, make sure it's at another angle right here. Two, we're gonna draw the second part. One, two, and then five triangles. One, two, three, four, and five. Perfect, that's looking pretty good. All right, next up, we gotta get the middle of Claude's body. So you can see in this picture, we always want to go back to our subject uh, that we're observing. And the next time you're at the academy, Claude is actually a pretty good subject because he doesn't move around a lot. So he's very good at posing for these artistic pictures. <clears throat> but in the Claude picture we have right here, we can see that he's lying full flat on his tummy. And that, and that his tummy kind of curves a little bit outward. So we're going to try and get that curve in this picture. So we're going to draw a line kind of like the jaw lines we drew before, but a lot longer. So we're gonna start up here and then draw it out and down to connect with his arms. Let's do that. Nice, big line, and then connect back here. Perfect. We're gonna do it for the other side as well. Draw out. Ooh, that was a little too big, but that's fine. We can always go back over with our drawing with an eraser. And if you're drawing this at home, you can use a pencil or a pen or a crayon as well. But let's do that one more time. Out, and then go back. Perfect. And we can go over that with some strokes of our drawing uh, material to get it a little bit more smooth. All right, so that's pretty good drawing of his tummy. And then we will draw the legs, or uh, the back legs, uh, the same way we drew these front legs right here. So we're gonna draw two lines again. One, two, one, two, for the other side, and then five triangles. One, two, three, four, and five. And then for the other side, one, two, one, two. Make sure they connect up to the side of his body right here. And then five triangles. One, two, three, four, and five. Perfect. Now, we are running out of space here on this page, so I'm going to move on a little bit further down so we can get that tail. But 
if you do run out of space on your paper, don't worry, because I am going to show you how to draw uh, if you don't have plot, if you don't have too much space. So if, for example, your piece of paper ends right here, you can always curve Claude's tail uh, to keep it all the way inside your piece of paper. And to do that, I will show you uh, the ways that I like to curve Claude's tail when I draw him. So we're going to draw a nice big candy cane shape, starting from the left-hand side going up and then going back down, connecting to the uh, back of his legs right there. So start here, nice big candy cane shape. Make sure we come back and connect it right there. And then for the other side, we're going to do a slightly smaller candy cane shape, uh, starting from right where we started for the first shape, then going back up, going back around, and then connecting to the last part of his body right there. Perfect. And to top it all off, we will close off this tail with a nice little round nub right there. I've noticed that alligators don't really have too many pointy features aside from these little uh, fingers and toes that they have right here. So when in doubt, make your shapes nice and round for these alligators. All right, now finally, the details. We wanna get these scales in here. And we really wanna show uh, these sort of back ridges that Claude has. You can see these ridges along here, and these lines that stretch all the way back towards his tail. So we're going to try and highlight that when we draw them onto our drawing of Claude. So to do that, we're going to draw slightly smaller lines, but in the same shape as these sort of belly lines right here. Uh, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So nice and lightly draw them in like that. So we want to have them inside the body and we'll follow it all the way up along the tail. And then that should be good for now. So we want to draw these lines nice and light and draw them inside of Claude that we've already drawn. All right, and finally, the scales. So going back to these scales, they come across in nice vertical and horizontal lines along Claude's body. So we can just go nice and lightly over with these scales, all these horizontal lines. And you might notice that I'm not spending too much time on these scales and these details right here, because like I said, these scientific illustrations don't need to be 100% accurate. They just need to convey the observations that you've made uh, out when you are in front of that animal you're drawing. So you can see these scales roughly follow Claude's body, and they do give us a sense of the sort of patterns that we can see on his body. Now we're going to do the same for his sides right here. Again, I'm just going very quickly just to give him a little bit more detail. All right, and then Claude also has these crisscrossing scales on his legs as well. They're a little bit uh, skewed at an angle, so we're going to try and emulate that as well. And again, just going over these nice and quickly, doesn't need to be super detailed. And finally, once we are done with the scales, and you'll notice that Claude doesn't really have that sort of scale-like definition on his head, so we're going to leave that relatively untouched, but we are going to add some eyes. Now, the eyes of alligators are kind of shaped like lemons, so I'm going to draw them in that sort of lemon-like shape. So we're going to draw one curved line up on top, one curved line bottom, same with the other side, one curved line on top, one curved line on the bottom. And then we're going to add Claude's irises, which are just simply lines right there. Now, if you wanted to color this in, uh, it's a pretty easy job. You don't really have to color in anything except his eyes, which are pink, uh, but we can do that at a later time. But 
let's take a look at our Claude drawing. Hmm, not bad. Oh, I am missing one last thing, his nostrils. You gotta add those in right there. But for a quick 10 minute sketch, I'd say that's not bad. All right. Well, if you enjoyed that, remember, you can always continue these scientific illustrations at home and make observations of the animals that you would see in your backyard or just on a walk around your neighborhood. That can be anything from a bird, a squirrel, maybe even the insects you might find as well. And remember, these scientific illustrations don't need to be 100% accurate or true to form. They only really need to include the observations that you made when drawing and observing these animals. So you can bring those observations back home and show it to your parents or whoever else is interested in this scientific field. But that's going to do it for us today. I hope you had a lot of fun drawing Claude. I know I did. And remember uh, to always make those key observations whenever you're jotting down these scientific illustrations. But that will do it for us today, folks. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.